Great to have you back on the show. Last time, about a month ago, you were on and you were talking about scandium, uh, the mineral itself and its use in aluminum, but also a project that you're doing up in Quebec with the First Nations. Can you update that for me just briefly? Yes. Well, it, it, it's our scandium flagship project, the Crater Lake project. Right. That is in the uh, territory of the Nascapi First Nation of Kawawachi Kamak. So we recently, in April, we announced the signing of a pre-development agreement with that First Nation as a starter. And uh, we're currently working on preparing our uh, summer field campaign on that project. So that's uh, the discussion we're currently having with uh, our friends in the, the, the Nascapi Nation. Okay, so then the news today, of course, is that you're doing a rights offering. Why do a rights offering now at this particular time? Well, because it's the, um, like any junior company, it's uh, always time to finance. Uh, we're quite active on the flow through side, on the exploration side, but we're also very active on market development efforts that do not qualify for flow through financing. So there's a need for us as we're advancing with potential uh, partners in the development of um, prototypes of products. Uh, we need to be able to fund our share of this. And uh, that's that's why currently the, our stock is at the lowest ever. I think it's the, the best time for the actual shareholders to take advantage of a rights offering. What are the benefits to the shareholders? Well, the rights offering, which is not oftenly used, uh, has two main advantage. First, it allows the non-accredited investors to be able to participate in, in an offering. Usually, companies that do uh, most of their financing through private placements to accredited investors, well, they, they leave on the sideline. There are uh, shareholders that do not otherwise qualify. So we thought as a very respectful way of, uh, well, respecting our shareholders is to offer them to participate on the same terms as would be requested or asked by larger institutional investors or accredited investors. The second interesting point is that it's freely tradable stock. So there's no four month old period. So uh, in, in this particular case, if you own 100,000 shares, to keep your relative position, your proper, proportionate position as a shareholder, would cost you about $1,400 to be able to keep your, your position which you could not do if we had done a normal private placement to accredited investors. Okay, so where are the proceeds going? Well, a uh, num number of places, obviously administrative costs to uh, last for at least the next 12 months, marketing costs, uh, market development costs. I was referring a little bit to our efforts in market development. Uh, one part is prototyping uh, specific aluminum scandium alloys parts to be able to demonstrate with end users their specific properties so that they would be interested in the future of uh, buying or developing with us uh, our project. Okay, but walk me back then through some of the structure because you have rights and warrants. Um, so the rights, let the structure first. Uh, yeah, the rights, the rights allows you for every share you own, you're going to receive one right. The right gives you until July 5th, the right to subscribe to a right unit. One share plus one common share. So the whole package costs you three cents and a quarter, gives you a full share, freely tradable, and a two-year full purchase, uh, share purchase warrant attached to it allowing you to subscribe for one additional share within the next two years at five cents. Okay, but you also have a standby commitment agreement. How does that play into the rights offering? In a rights offering and in the in the junior space, uh, if you don't have ahead of you one year of uh, working cap, you must always have at least 12 months of working cap according to the TSX rules. So uh, we did not have that uh, when we launched the offering. So you need to have a guarantee that the minimum of your offering, in this case, in our case, 
it's a maximum of 3 million, but we have a minimum determined at 1 million, which allows us to, to live for the next 12 months, pursue our activities. So uh, you need to confirm to the exchange that you have a minimum guaranteed to be subscribed. So that's the role of the standby purchaser. So they're there. If for any reason uh, we do not attain $1 million of subscriptions, they will cover the difference. Worst case, worst comes to worst. If nobody subscribes, well, they will be taking $1 million on the terms of the rights offering. So the, the company today can say, well, we're good for the next 12 months uh, uh, on our marketing efforts and our, uh, our efforts to continue advancing the project because of the standby purchasers. Beyond the rights offering, Guy, uh, what should investors look for over the next few months? What's the most exciting development you could see down the road? Well, currently uh, we're uh, commissioning uh, our uh, field team for this summer uh, on the, the Crater Lake. Uh, the camp is being reopened uh, next week. Uh, the cook and the, uh, the guy in charge of the, uh, of the camp are <laughs> arriving early next week. Uh, to be followed Cook's by uh, Cook is important. Oh, that's the most important thing and and food so, and uh, so after that the WSP comes and starts uh, all of the um, data collection for the environmental permitting uh, so fish uh, habitat uh, water uh, fauna flora uh, the birds everything and uh, a week or two after the diamond drillers are going to come we are um, doing geomechanical drilling to determine for the pre-feasibility study work, the, uh, the angles of the slopes of the open pit and a uh, little diamond drilling to uh, increase the quality of the resource and take some material for the metallurgical testing. Dean, thanks for this update. Well, that's my pleasure and please keep following us. Shall do. Bye.